1956 Zenith black and white portable tabletop and again this is like a 21 inch this is the resurrection of this set part two part one was extremely popular if you haven't seen that you probably want to watch it before this in this video we're going to listen to an EMS siren and I am still hoping that there's someone local who's willing to adopt this and give this a good home because I, I don't have room for it and it's got to go very soon so also there I mean there is the option of shipping it but it's going to be expensive it's going to be very expensive uh, three to four hundred dollars shipping and handling to get it to somebody so just keep that in mind if you want it I'll ship it but three to four hundred dollars after the previous video I had several inquiries about what I was going to do with this set from people who wanted it or parts off of it I'll address that at the very end of the video okay continuing on with the 1956 Zenith trash resurrection we're going to try and get the vertical deflection to work better because that was the main problem last time is it would wouldn't vertically lock and it was all distorted so pretty simple circuit few things we want to check and I've been harping on these real hard integrator one this is what filters the sync pulse going into the vertical multi vibrator and then of course integrator number two which is the feedback which controls so I'm going to start by checking these two this capacitor of course uh, is highly critical this electrolytic um, this capacitor this capacitor these resistors I'm just gonna go through and and check this stuff and see what we got I think one of the two of these controls is damaged it's gonna be interesting to try and find these what is this one 8.5 meg 7.5 meg stop is that what that says It's going to be interesting to try and find an 8.5 meg if that's bad. 047 here, we want to take a look at that. Are they leaky? Are they lossy? These, these parts are very critical in this circuit. We know these white things are problematic, but we'll start right here with our integrators since I've been obsessing on these. So 87 dot green, that's our 87 dot 5, 87 dot yellow, that's our 87 dot 4. Of course the green and the yellow are the third digit. So let's ohm out the outside pins. This one should be 247k resistors in series, so around around 100k, and this one should be 233k's in series. These Cornell Dubler 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 users, I'm going to have to pull them out, I think, but they're all Cornell Dubliers, all of them. They're probably all leaky. Well, our first integrator, 87.5, which should be around 100, is around 60K. Uh, I'm not going to confirm that that's exactly what it is until I remove it out of circuit, if I remove it out of circuit, but that that doesn't raise a red flag to me as being that bad. I think the tolerance on these things is probably 500% like everything else in a tube set. Okay, the resistor that feeds it's supposed to be a 68, it's measuring 51. Then the 100 to ground uh, is measuring 58, so I think we're probably measuring multi-paths here. So without totally removing these things from circuit, it's going to be real hard to accurately nail them, but I'm just going to leave them. I think it's not a problem. And here's our 87.4, which should be 233s. It's right on. It's right on. Okay, this one's actually test good. No leakage and test good. This one here is trash. 
This and this is one of the critical ones. This is the one that couples the signal into the uh, integrator. That one measures good as well. No leakage, right on the money. Okay, I got the two main offending caps replaced. Uh, I checked, removed from circuit and checked all the other ones. They're all good. They're either good or bad. There's not some that are partially leaky. And I noticed something here that I'd forgotten about, which is this right here, this local distance switch on the back. And a bunch of the wires are cut to it. Am I even showing it there? And this ties right into the whole sink separator. But what's interesting is I can't... I'm not seeing where those connect. You know, where, where's the other side of where they cut them off from? That's, that's my question right now. You can see that local DX switch is connected directly to the sink separator. So am I going to have to trace out every single one of these? Is this sabotage? What is this? Why would they cut the? Why would anyone cut the wires off that? Well, you know, I decided I would take the switch apart just to try and clean the contacts because look at those contacts and. Um, of course, parts went flying all over the place, so pretty much eol that. But yeah, I'm trying to figure figure out what's going on here. I think what I'm going to have to do... I, I, did someone already bypass this? Is that what's going on here? I'm just not... Because they left the two that were connected to the... Uh, Two, the two controls. See, I'm a, I'm a little stumped here. Okay, here's the three wires that were cut off from here. And what I'm gonna do, this is just sabotage. Is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in local. In local, all I have to do is connect this to here, which is this one that comes over here to the uh, vertical linearity. All right, so I'm checking the pots. This is the 8.5 meg, it's bad. This is the hold control. You can see as I rotate it here. It's good, it seems to be okay. So we'll try and keep our fingers off of that one. Now this is the other one, and this one, that's all the way closed, or shorted. So I'm turning it up, and you can see it just goes to 4 megs. So that one's bad, too. It's just, yeah, it's bad. So that one's a 3.5K. That's the linearity. The size is bad. The linearity is bad. Okay, so the volume control is bad, and I mean it is bad. It is just, I turn it all the way up, and it's just open. This pot is bad. This pot is bad. There's two that are good. This one's good, and this one's good. So we got Disco Saturday Nights going on the, uh, was it K-Surf AM? And we're working on the Zenith. What a Saturday night party, man. Unbelievable. ABBA. Okay, I got a 5 meg in place of the 8.5. I hope that's good enough. Uh, instead of a 3.5, I got two fours. I mean, two twos, so this is four. So I think we're about ready to fire this up and see what it does. I wonder if the YouTube thing will get this Gloria Gaynard with all this squealing from this TV in it. Oh. 
I mean, it's so lo-fi that you would think there'd be no way it could nail it, but you'd be surprised at how good that content ID thing is. So, the 3.5K is not doing anything. Since this is not having much effect, I have a feeling that capacitor's open. That 100 microfarad. Yeah, I'm getting my disco agenda in tonight. All right, well, what did I do? I tacked a capacitor on the back. That should have given me more deflection, not less, I would have thought. And I think I connected this in the right place. I don't know. So what happens if I... There we go, bad tube socket. High resistance in the tube socket. So did the capacitor help it at all? Oh, hell yes it did, okay. So let me... By the way, listen to this. Everybody thinks that's the Coast to Coast AM song. That's a disco song. Chase. It's the name of the song. Boy, has this video gotten off topic. Oh, I can hear the complaints rolling in already. Music is irritating me. Why are you playing music in your videos? Why do you have all this noise? Well, changing capacitors is boring work, people. It just died. It just went black on me. It appears that the damper tube just failed. I got 285 volts going into the damper tube and I got 200 millivolts coming out. I, I've never seen that before. It just died. Like you unplugged it. The power just died. This one's arcing inside. Come on, cut it out. Damn fireworks show inside this one. What happened to our vertical all of a sudden?
Man, I just, come on. Cut it out. Jeez. You can't say these damn videos aren't entertaining. That's for damn sure. find another 6AX4. Okay, I'm kind of, kind of getting to the point where I have to work fast because things are starting to fail on this. I've never seen a damper tube just go open like that. That's a first for me. Um, not that that was part of the original problem, but this is the third damper tube. Um, so, yeah. All right, I'm actually getting there. I got the fine tuning broken loose on the tuner. So now I can fine tune this set. And the tuner is actually working. The sensitivity is kind of poor. Probably should have, when I wired it, I probably should have put it on DX. Yeah, that's that's a pretty hot signal I'm feeding into it right there. That's 5 volts. So let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. Wow, I did my job good, didn't I? Look at that. It's actually displaying everything. It's just the sensitivity on the tuner is bum. It's, I shouldn't need to feed five volts into the tuner. I'll tell you what, that is ready to have to show us a picture right there. There it is, hooked up to the converter box. There we go, give me a commercial. Let's do some Febreze. I got the IF alignment so screwed up. Yeah, it's blurry. I've got the IF alignment so screwed up. It almost looks like it's a little overloaded, too. But you can almost read that text at the bottom. This is it. This is the Zenith. I didn't switch the sets out. That's it. It's working. Resurrected. I've done the best I can with the audio. It's just just screwed up. You know, I could just take the damn audio out of the uh, uh, out of the converter box and feed it right into the back of that broken volume control. We shot him before he could answer. I'm starting to lose patience. Well, a good thing. We only got a few.
few hours on the clock before we have to end this pleasant exchange. That ain't what this is. This is me sitting around watching you consume a 4,000 calorie fried heart attack. I'm gonna miss your wit. I don't like my time wasted. You're not telling me what I want to know. I'm done. Well, he was right about you. Sharp tongue, short temper. Heart attack, stroke, or death. While not for weight loss, big toes may help. I got the IF alignment so screwed up. But look at how good the vertical is now. It's rock solid. But I got all kinds of ghosting and shadows and blurry and... I want to review real quick what we did to get the vertical stable. Replace two leaky capacitors, this one and this one. I left the old two in the circuit just in case because I'm going to pull my good parts out. Uh, I left the two old ones in there in case someone does adopt this set and actually does decide to fully restore it. So we had two leaky capacitors here, a .022 and a .01. I'll show you where those are in the schematic. We had two bad pots here. Well, there's a bunch of bad pots, but an 8.5 volt in the vertical and a 3.5K in the vertical. And for this one, I only had a, a 5 meg and it was supposed to be 8.5 meg and for 3.5 K I had two 2 K's and I put them in series uh, an open filter bypass capacitor electrolytic I just tacked one on right here I was able to break the fine tuning rod loose on the tuner and use the tuner um, as far as the audio goes, I've got the IF alignment so screwed up from tweaking it, trying to compensate for the uh, inability to adjust the fine tuning. So it needs an IF alignment. Oh, I connected the local, the, the wires to the local DX switch were cut. The local DX switch was corroded beyond use anyway, so I just put it in local mode. We can take a look here at the schematic. So the two integrators were good, those two. This control is good. This control is bad. This is the 8.5 meg. This is the 3.5K. This is the 100 microfarad that was open, not causing this control not to be very effective. Um, that capacitor was fine. That capacitor was very leaky. It didn't even measure it on the capacitor checker. It didn't even open the eye at all anywhere. That capacitor was very leaky. Same thing. It didn't open the eye anywhere. Uh, not shorted because I checked them with an ohm meter. That cap was good. That cap was good. All the other caps were good. All the resistors were good except those two and these two pots and that capacitor. So that's a review on what we did between part one and part two where I got the vertical to work where the vertical now locks. I really suspected the integrators were bad but they were good on this set. The other thing that happened is the 6AX4 damper tube just went open just for no apparent reason the thing was running the filament didn't go out but it just stopped conducting and um, the replacement was arcing inside so I had to dig another one out of the junk box I mean I uh, tubes rarely just go open like that what would happen if you were watching sports game and sports team was winning and you had the house bet on sports team and the TV went black. You'd throw football at the TV and break safety glass. 
Now this set is up for grabs to a good home, but I would like to keep the vacuum tubes that I put in it. They're out of my stash, and I'd like to keep them for uh, future projects. Uh, I, I would be willing to sell them for a reasonable price. But I did get a lot of questions about this set and people who wanted the set, um, wanted me to send them parts, all of that. And let's go over those real quick. Keep in mind, I can't reply to private messages on YouTube. So if you send me a message and you don't include an email, I can't get back to you. So I'm not ignoring you. It function, there's just something wrong with it on my channel. So I had an inquiry about the glass front. Uh, I, yeah, I don't mind. Someone said they had one of these and they needed the glass front. I don't mind sending the glass front, giving someone the glass front, but they got to cover my cost to, to pack it and time to ship it and all that stuff. And nobody wants to really voluntarily wait in line at the post office you know, or pack stuff. So I, I kind of have to be compensated for that. Uh, somebody wanted the whole thing minus the guts, I guess, for something, whatever. I think some people are disconnected from how high shipping costs are today. There was also another inquiry, somebody wanted the whole thing shipped to them in Oklahoma. Do you realize how much it would cost to box and ship this? This is not, a 12 inch kitchen tabletop set. This is a 21 inch big, I mean it's big. It's a big 21 inch set. So it's not light and shipping it is going to be very expensive. It would probably be best to put it on a pallet and put it freight. And real quick for the person that was interested in the glass, it doesn't look like it's too scratched up on the front but if you can see that water damage there on the inside that didn't want to come off. You might be able to clean that off with some type of polish, but that was like baked onto the glass really good.